Skills, I think you all know it. I'm not going to go through through the basic skills of setting. I think you know it's important to have the ball somewhere over here. You know, lower a little bit because you can use your triceps, especially when you're younger, like this. And also because you can see what's in front of you, what's beside. You know, I don't like setters that take the ball over here, take it really high because a lot of times they cannot locate or get the energy enough with their part. But when you teach your center. Get it to be from here, they can use only this, or they can use if they're at a longer distance, a high ball situation. You don't want to change it up all the time and say, okay, if you're in a high ball situation, you drop your elbows. If you're in a normal situation, you bring your elbows up. Just try to be consistent if you have to less, uh, less potential errors in, in the execution of the set. Um, it's okay, guys. Coaches, getting tired? Coaches. Um, uh, second thing, um, the, the principles, basic principles of setting for me, uh, okay, apart from, from the skills, is, is why we're setting, what we're trying to accomplish here. So I want three blockers, guys, we'll remove the chairs, please. Okay, I want three blockers on that side, three defenders. It's not this is necessary for the defenders, but okay, I want attackers on this side, one here. One middle guy, one outside guy, one five hitter. Okay, basically what we're doing, the principles of, of team sport in general, football, rugby, basketball, is always to open gaps, right? You're trying to create gaps in the offense. In rugby, you well, always a line of defensemen, you're trying to fake, trying to get that gap. In football, you're running patterns, trying to get the, the defense to move and create an opening. Well, in volleyball, it's the same thing. So basically, you have four basic gaps that you're trying to attack is from the end up to the first blocker, just from the first blocker to the middle, there's this middle to this player here, and this opening here. What you're trying to do is always train to open these gaps, okay, and prevent the blockers from stopping the ball, right? So you do that through execution. Okay, that's the basis of offense, okay? After that, there's also individual tactics by the hitter, the blockers are there, I need to play the hands, I need to chip, a lot of information there, but the basic 
aspects of, of setting is basically that you're trying to create gaps for your hitters to hit in through execution, speed, okay, and combination. Right? So you saw yesterday we ran some pipes. Those of you who saw the map, we ran some pipes. Uh, the, the Portuguese team, the smaller team, so they're easier to attack to the middle, but also they have to make fewer choices. So then it becomes a, 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 a chess game, trying to figure out if they're going to jump, not jump, and then making the right choice in our case. Um, so he's going to learn to be able, in, in, in order for us to run a lot of different combinations, we need to master those combinations. You need to master the uh, 51, you need to master a 31 to be efficient at it. You know, a fast set to the outside, okay, a fight. So those are, but that's not easy to master, right? So it doesn't matter how, how good my game plan is offensively, if I cannot master the, the elements that I need to execute the game plan, such as running a good fight, then my game plan won't be very useful. Okay, so again, we're trying to use and attack those four gaps, all right? So what we're going to do first is get one. Get one. Okay. So what we're going to do is just toss balls to the center back here. Okay. And we're going to run some combinations to start. Okay. Up to you. Okay. So we attack this gap. Go ahead. Again. See the speed of the set, you know, a little slow, a little off-center. In that case, you know, we got two blocks, so that gap was closed. Go ahead. The center is not looking, obviously, he's not at any time looking at what the blockers are doing on the other side. This is something you need to teach your kid. Peripheral vision, or just if you have time, just look across. Okay? Obviously, when you're game planning, you're going to use a lot of information. This middle likes to commit every time there's a good pass, he's jumping or he's fronting. If you run a 31, he's in front of the, the 31, then you know that you're going to be using certain sets to get away from that. Now, he needs to learn on good passes to look across. At the beginning, of, you got a lot of setters looking, but not really making a decision based on what they see. They're just looking because they're looking. I've seen a lot of these, especially in the pro league and stuff. So it's just because they created the habit of looking and it's something that they do. Uh, good setters, Ken Reeves, Ricardo, they look and they do something about what they see. Right? It confirms that the guy is there or it doesn't, or the guy's releasing early. I've seen some of the most, the higher level athletes, like, like such as Ken Reeves, I've seen him like, he, he liked the game of, of playing against the middle blockers, so he would look and then if the guy would release early, then he would hold and stuff like that, kind of wink at the guy on the other side and stuff like that against good blockers. It's a chess game like that. So I remember Ricardo when he played here in Brazil a couple of years back and he's coming in, he's coming in on the free ball over here and he's looking at Murray. He's looking at him, he's looking at him, make a move, make a move, make a move, or he stays there. He obviously knows that he's looking at him. And then he's flipping the ball, he's got a one-on-one. -on -one. He was at that time the best setter in the world, and that's the reason why. He was accurate, he was deceptive, but, and he saw everything that happened on the other side of the book. So this is something, not, not the, it's something that he practiced and trained and trained and trained to get your athletes to get used to visualizing and knowing why they're looking. Okay? So what I'm going to ask you to do, we're going to give you good balls, okay? And you're going to watch. You're going to have a, a quick look just before, okay? And try to go away of where number 14 is going to be. All right?
Okay, Doc, what did you notice? Not very much. I noticed a lot. Sorry? Okay, you're saying where he's at. What is he not doing? He hasn't jumped to the middle. He hasn't jumped to the middle. He went both ways, so, you know, if he jumps, there's something you need to memorize. So memorizing becomes really important for the test. What are you memorizing? What did he do? He went there, then he went there. So if he's going and not committing to the middle, then maybe you should be setting the middle, right? This is the thing you have to learn. Okay? Now, don't set the middle because I told you, because you might just jump and not. <laughs> Go ahead. Not looking. Have a look. You're not looking. Look. Okay, stop. So I remember, you know, when you got tall blockers like this, I remember Ricardo one match I went to see in Treviso when he was setting for that club. And uh, he set the middle more than he did anything else. And he got mad at his middle because I just started getting tired. But the other team, the other group, the other team had three tall middles, two tall middles that didn't want to jump. They were just in read. And he challenged them the whole match to jump. And he never did, so he kept setting it. And he just looked at him. Come on, block, block my sets. And then as soon as they get, they, he, then he would flip one outside and then come back and then challenge him and challenge him and challenge him again. And he got mad at his middle because a few times they came in late and stuff and just wanted to set them. They wanted the game easy. So in that case, if this guy doesn't want to commit, then you tell your guy to come quick and you're going to set him down until he decides to commit. But you need to memorize when he does, because when he does, then, then the game starts. Then you're going to start playing. All right, go ahead again. Let's run the... As soon as you put an horizontal component to your sets, not difficult to start. Meaning, speed this way. You got hitters going this way, not able to hit. But the more you're able to put a horizontal component to speed to the horizontal component, the more receptive you get. So yeah, it can become. So teams that say that run, say the U.S. are really good at running 31s, they're really efficient defensively. So I've always really good at running this. Not many teams run it. Even the Brazilians, they like to run. They'd rather attack that gap by running a 51 and a 5 than try to go to that gap and run it fast enough than try to run a 31 because it's such a difficult set to hit. Okay, but if you succeed in make, making it really efficient, you get pretty good open because you can spread it out, you can open it, and then play separation against position two. So let's run some 31, okay? And just run your offense off that bit. Set, eh? So 51 is horizontal, is vertical. Ball's there, I'm coming to it. 31 ball's coming this way. See the difficulty? Okay, if you can master that set though, you get an advantage because for the blockers, it's harder 
to block a ball that's, you know, where do I, 51, I know it's coming here. Here is coming to me, boom. But as soon as we start moving, like either running slide the long 50 or 31s, then there's an horizontal component to it, then it's harder to block. Okay? You saw yesterday, uh, Joao, the number 12 for, for, uh, for Portugal. He's one of probably, he's getting a little bit older, but he's a very good attacker. I mean, he hits really sharp angle. And we're, we're trying to play an assistant yesterday. On the video, we saw guys trying to chase him, but he's really good at hitting the 31. So it makes, you know, their offense, it opens up their offense so, so much more. So let's try it again. Okay, one thing here that's happening is that. Bryce is, Bryce is trying to, to run his 31 from here. Now, if you want efficient offense, you don't need to hide that you're going to run 31. It's not going to do much, actually, because you're going to come to that spot. So, What you need to do, though, is be efficient in coming to that spot. Face shoulders to the corner so that you can attack the ball that's coming here. It's not here or turning here. If you're going this way, if you're trying to pay, it's very difficult because the set's chasing you. Right? And what you want is want to be a spot where you're far away from the outside so that if he decides to release over, there's enough room. If I'm over here somewhere, I'm jamming my own fence in this case. So if you want to try to come to this spot so you can learn to come directly to the line. So you take away a lot of the, uh, the potential errors by making a, a, a really good approach and then having the same approach, the center can try to find him at the same spot all the time. Okay? And the deception, then you can run a pipe up, or if you want to run separation, if this guy fronts, and you see that he fronts, then you can go down. Okay, so, yeah. Let's run it 31, but yeah, start from that position. takes time. Now he stayed in system, he didn't front. The other one he fronted, he went over. With a smaller blocking, you can overload like that, that's fine. But normally if you front, you go this way, right? Okay, and that's what you need to do is with time, what's going to happen is you'll be able to see the movement. Okay? But you need to pay attention and you need to do it and do it and do it and do it. Okay? And you'll make mistakes through that. Right? You're not going to be making all the right choices. If you make the effort, a little bit of time. Anybody read the uh, talent poll here? Yeah, Nealine, eh? This is exactly the case. If he does it and does it and does it, he's going to go a lot of Nealine and he'll be able to become that. But the conduction to make the decision will be the same. So, okay, run a few more.
Okay, so sometimes you want speed, but you don't you lose location, right? You want location all the time. You don't want your hitter to be like this or outside the antenna because you can't turn mine. So location means I want my hitter to have all options on the outside. Okay, so if my hitters are not ready yet for a very, very speedy set, very high, then I slow it down a little bit. It's still it's still deceptive. A lot of it is when the clever release and the choice that you make. But what we want is a consistent set. Now with immature athletes, a lot of times the speed, you know, if they're not strong enough to be able to plant and go through the ball, then you might need to slow it down until they get more physical maturity to be able to execute these these, uh, these hits and get it fine. All right, let's go a little more. Now what we haven't talked here is that because the, the success of your own fans is also is, is, is dependent also on your capacity to, in practice, to stop it. Okay, so we haven't talked to them about blocking system. But like when we train, we have a blocking system that's trying to challenge our offense. Okay, so when you're training your offense and you're setting, then it will become as efficient. You know, you will become efficient if your blocking side is able to stop it or try to challenge it as much as possible and make it more difficult to score. Okay? I'll show you a little drill uh, just after this. Let's finish up. Okay, make sure you're looking. Yeah, we're looking. Now, one thing you need to do right now, we, we, we set, if, if you're going to control the play, okay, is uh, change side often. It's a completely different thing when the ball's coming from position five. The ball's, in this situation, you tend to, just the ball bounces off your hand, and this is what, we're, most setters are pretty at ease with this. When the ball comes from behind, you have to, impulse it to the outside or stop it and bring it back this way much more confidence. I do about two thirds of my my setting exercises with the balls coming from position one versus position five in ratio. Just because position five is so much easier. You know, it's just it's just it just it is much easier. But uh, and like in pro for example this year in Turkey in the finals we played a setter that we we served to one no matter what who was there to the fairway, it didn't matter because this setter can locate the ball at four from when the ball came from position one. And we just kept serving there. It didn't matter if they passed well, that the, the percentage of side out was so low that we ended up on the winning side. So, you know, like you don't want your setter to have that. You don't want your setter to not be able to, to side out from all positions. It's something that you need to practice a lot, a lot, to do a lot of reps at The drill I'm going to show you is, um, 